You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Hi, Althea here from Live on Gabriela TV. I recently spoke with the Infinite Atom, a local ethereal alt-rock group that brings together psychedelia mixed with funk, reggae, rock, and dance music. Last week, they just released their first single, Ever Infinite, which is part of their upcoming first album, Inside and Outside. We discussed a little bit about their background, how the band came together, and their music journey. Here's my interview with them. Thank you for taking time to be here today. Could everyone introduce yourself and your position in the band? Hey, Joe, how about you start? <laughs> um, who? <laughs> Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, sure. I can start it, I guess. Um, I mean, Adam is the leader uh, of this band, but uh, my name is uh, Josette or Joseph. Uh, some people would call me Josette. Some people call me Joseph. I'm originally from Brazil. I live on Gabriela for a few years now uh, and I have been playing around with Adam and uh, other bands around here on Gabriela and uh, I love it here. That's perfect. You can pass it to another member now. Okay, I'll, show, I'll throw uh, maybe to Adam. Hey Gavin, how about you, man? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I play bass in the group. Um, I've been living on Gabriela for a couple of years, love it here. It's got a real cool community. Uh, met all these guys at a community jam and uh, just started making music right away, basically. Uh, pass it over to, to you, Mikey. Yeah, I'm Mike, I uh, play drums and yeah, I've been on the island for like nine years, maybe. Uh, yeah, I've been playing with a bunch of, bunch of bands over the years and yeah, it's great. It's great to be doing this. We've been going for about a year now. Uh, yeah, just really excited to release our album coming out. My name's Adam, and uh, I am the singer and songwriter for The Infinite Atom, which is uh, an A T O M. It's uh, the name. The name's a bit funny because I feel like it. I feel like it's it's said like it's Infinite Atom, uh, <laughs> but I, I I always try to like heavily pronounce Atom, like. Just, just so that it's a, that's a bit differentiated. Infinite atom, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what experience did you have before forming the group? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, uh, some of these, some of these songs uh, were written before the group started. Um, I've had some of these kind of in my back pocket uh, for a couple of years. Um, a lot of the songs are newer. Um, I moved to the island about three years ago um, and have been writing most of these songs basically just in the last two years. Yeah, we've, we've practiced now about uh, somewhere, somewhere between 20 and 25 songs, um, which is pretty good, pretty good for a year of, of, of playing together. Uh, not even a year. I think it's been I think it's been about maybe eleven months or uh, maybe almost twelve months. Yeah, it's it's been really exciting for me. I haven't really been part of a lot of original groups. You know, my background has been a lot through the educational program. You know, I went to VIU in Nanaimo and and did that kind of stream, uh, learning kind of like jazz music. You know, uh, old charts and stuff. And then meeting up with Adam, he's singing these amazing songs that he's writing. And they have such a cool, like, islandy theme to them. Everything is so positive and, like, has such a good message. Like, it's been, yeah, it's been a really, like, growth project for me. Uh, uh, maybe maybe the whole band. I don't want to speak for everybody, but it certainly has been a, a pretty cool experience. Yeah, I would say that, too. It's um, Working with Adam is really nice because 
his music is really creative and has a lot of space for uh, creating music and putting my uh, my colors and my ideas in the music. And I really like I really like that kind of kind of music and yeah and. I'll say also, Jose has like a million colors to add. He's being very modest, but he is a master of effects. And uh, again, I coming from the jazz world, I didn't get a lot of effects, you know, coming from there. And then I meet Jose and he's just like, oh man, you guys have to hear this guy play. Yeah, I like to add effects on music and yeah. I really like to play different styles and this is one of my favorite ones because I can really create and uh, explore creativity and yeah, there's so much to do in this kind of music. It's really fun. I don't even know exactly the name of the style because we blend so many styles like funk, psychedelic, reggae, uh, who knows what, rock, you know? So it's it kind of like, a, um, yeah, just pushes the boundaries for creativity, you know? Yeah, I think we all feel quite free with what we can do because because at, uh, the way Adam's written these songs, there's, there's so many different styles that we can interpret from from what he's done and it's just a lot of fun to um to get creative with it and you know not not get too tied down with like a specific style and it's yeah it's been really good all my favorite music is that way and yeah it's uh, kind of cool too that mike also uh he you know he puts the drum you know like sometimes like we all put a little bit of a style there and then we can uh, compose with this, right? So sometimes, like, Mike, you hear something, and then, like, we all think, oh, that would sound cool. Yeah, so let's try it this way. But I, even though I was thinking that, and same with like, Mikey's uh, or Gavin, I mean, sorry, Gavin, and then, you know, we just, uh, you know, just create one part of it and then just go from there. So, like, sometimes we weren't thinking the same, but then it just becomes something interesting. Uh, you know, just with this kind of little idea that he, I mean, not like his composition, he came and just, you know, he brings like something that we just all create something out of a little bit of something, like some different spices on the music or, you know, colors or whatever we call it, styles and ideas for his, you know, his project and his music. When, when these, when these songs start out, I'm, often writing them just on an acoustic guitar um which is not really my my, my strong suit but uh i don't know i don't know much theory uh, and i don't really play many instruments so that's kind of my it's kind of my my uh my, my instrument of choice right now um just for writing um but often often i'm writing these songs in my head first um just as i go about my day as i'm driving around as i'm just doing any activity i'll often just be kind of compiling different layers of the song in my head uh finding different beats maybe i'll maybe i'll, I'll hear some rhythm first and i'll be as, as i kind of take each step as i'm as i'm walking around i might find some rhythm there and then from there i can find lyrics that fit in there and then i'll take those lyrics and then i'll find some notes that will fit there on the guitar um um yeah oft oftentimes they're 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 not even they're not even completely finished, you know. I'm, I'm able to I'm able to show it to the rest of the guys, um, and then they then they can kind of come up with their own interpretation of, of how these parts kind of come out, um, and then uh, within within a couple of months, we kind of usually develop each of these songs into into something else. Um, yeah, sometimes less. Sometimes they come together in a couple of days. Some of them, you know, take a little bit longer, and we work on them for a little while. We're like, yeah, we got it. But you know something just doesn't sit right, and then one day it'll click, and then we'll do it a little differently, and then it's like, oh no, now we've got it. But yeah, the process is never always exactly the same, but it's always fun. Yeah. It's always yeah. uh, it's a journey. Yeah, and Adam's uh, melodies are really catchy. Like I'm not the only one who says this. Some people outside uh, that hear him, uh, they say that his, his lyrics and his melodies are very catchy. So it really works out. So, you know, it's not like the kind of uh, melody that is too repetitive, but it's somehow catchy. So it's like interesting and catchy. So yeah, they're all your words. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. What's the story behind the name? Like, were there other names that didn't make it? Like, how is it going? Like, how did it form? Well, it's a it's a long story, but um, I guess 
the name the name i think came from a song it was uh which is which is this first song that was released called ever infinite um i think when i first wrote the song um i think the song might have been called the infinite atom i think it wasn't probably wasn't too much longer after i wrote the song that we I think I wrote it. I wrote it two summers ago, and we started playing maybe about five, six months after that. Um, I think for the first bit, it was called the Infinite Atom, um, and then there wasn't necessarily a band name associated with with my stuff yet. And then um, the song kind of just transformed into the into the I don't know into the maybe maybe to the to the flagship of the of the of the band. Because you already had that name before we joined, hey? Is that true? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing with Adam for a while. Um, I, I mean, just like him and I sometimes, right? Like, or just jamming on our those gems that we've been organizing. Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what was that, Adam? <laughs> like, did you? I, I think like one day you just like really liked the name also because of the song, right? And it's a great idea to just have a song with a band name, you know? Sometimes it's a good way to just like start a like a band name is just like see the songs that we have and then see something special about it right like about the yeah. second idea about atoms and stuff and also atom is a great idea it sounds like infinite atom you know <laughs> so, I, I, you know I've, I've never made the correlation yeah. we all did <laughs> yeah it, it kind of sums up what our music's about too you know like not to get too uh in depth with it but like like our lyrics are a lot you know adam's lyrics if i can speak for them are a lot about like the infinite nature of of our reality you know music kind of like goes in a lot of uh places and um you know some of them you can't even grasp sometimes you know they are they're beyond our understanding but they resonate with us and so the infinite adam to me anyway it's just kind of like this universal uh this universal vibe we're putting out you know um yeah, just seeing what resonates. Thanks, Gavin. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Oh. Living inside 
How do you decide what goes into this um, and this album, Inside and Outside? I think like the ones that um, we are for sure. This is our first album, right? So I think we are deciding by the ones that we know best. Because <laughs> I think Adam has like what, like 150 songs or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not quite. Not quite. 150,000. <laughs> We're like, yeah, like Adam has a lot of songs and. Yeah, if we had more time, maybe we could have even chose different songs. But those are the ones that we are best, and they are just really good already. So I think we joked about doing a double album release, you know, <laughs> for the first album, and they're like, no, 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 like we'll just do another album. But like, yeah, we there's lots of songs to work on. The length of it is kind of a double album. It's gonna be yeah, like mm -hmm. minutes. I think it's sixteen songs. Oh, is there a, a certain theme to it? You know, that's kind of evolving as, as we hear it, actually. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Like, as as the track, I listen to more and more tracks. Like, um, there is, like, themes that kind of develop through it and almost like a little story. Um, I, it's hard to describe what it would be, though, actually. I would I would say, uh, wait for the album, and, and you'll have to give it a listen. Yeah, we, we did we did add a 16th track. There was, there was 15, uh, and then we added a, a 16th one that kind of uh, as, like, a intermission piece that uh kind of helps helps add some add some story to the album how do you how do you do, uh, as a band usually deal with um obstacles or other factors that could affect like pr the production process or your performance if there were like were there any before like obstacles uh... i think positive attitude honestly like the other day we were trying to shoot a video in the snow you know we all got colds and um, we just kept pushing through and laughing and, you know, having a good time. And by the end of the day, we stumbled upon some new ideas that were better than the original. And like, if we hadn't have struggled through it, we wouldn't have gotten there. And so we just had to remember like, oh, this is, it's part of the journey. Like it's fun and it all worked out. Well, improvisation is really important, right? Like, totally. we, like I feel like, like a lot of times we plan stuff and it doesn't really go like we really planned it so like yeah, like the video clip that we we're talking about um like we had actually we were supposed to start like maybe at 8 a.m <laughs> <laughs> i don't know adam said like i asked adam what time should we start tomorrow and then adam said 8 a.m is good but then like gavin forgot something <laughs> well, let's not blame anybody not let's not blame fingers. Not blame fingers. we overcame obstacles that's an obstacle right there <laughs> anyways <laughs> So yeah, like we had some trouble, like and then like uh, we had to like really like get our stuff together, and then the end was like 3 p.m. and it was almost the sun set, and we then suddenly had an idea like oh maybe we should you know film in the snow because the cameraman's not here yet, and then like we, the machine didn't work because we had a like a Polaroid like video clip idea, so the Polaroid didn't work, and uh, so we went to like the thrift store. Because I thought, I just, you know, we just thought that, like, all the ideas would be all there because the clothes were all there, so we could just change a lot of clothes in the video clip, you know? So we could have a lot of clothes for the video clip, and it would be really funny. So, because that was the main idea. Like, we have a lot of clothes, and we just keep changing and putting in the Polaroid. And, uh, I mean, that was improvisation, I guess, and uh, that was an obstacle. <laughs> Yeah, that's a positive <laughs> obstacle. I see. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. just had to improvise and uh, <laughs> just had to do with stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. We there's, can't. There's, but, sorry, go go on, Jeff. Um, yeah, I just I feel like sometimes giving up is an obstacle. That's all. Yeah. 
and uh, we should not give up. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say that there's there's lots of ideas um, that I think we're, we're we're all gonna have as far as how the sound goes, and it's uh, especially as I'm writing them, it's like from 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 kind of conception to to the to the product and to the art, it's like it's a whole different thing from from where I'm first imagining it uh, to how we end up playing it to how we end up recording it um, to the mixing to different effects that we add. Um, you know, they're, they're still kind of, it's still an ongoing process and we're still, we're still, we're still kind of finding, I think, the sound, finding musicians we want to play with and add to the live shows. Um, so this, this, the sound is kind of always evolving. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's, it's, there's kind of constantly new obstacles, but, but personally, I, I think it's great. I think it's, uh, it's part of, part of the fun and, and part of the challenge that we get to kind of explore, explore these sounds together and, and find out what sounds good. And, and I think, you know, through communication, we're, we're able to kind of say, you know, this, this might not work or, you know, someone will come up with a new idea and, you know, last minute and, and, and it does work or it fits into the song now and it wasn't there before, but now it seems like it was there forever. So yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, what what was the what was, what was the quote that you that you posted, Mikey, the other day? So, remember about starting. Um, you shouldn't stick with start, right? It was a well, Rick Rubin quote. Just go read something by Rick Rubin, and that'll do. <laughs> it was it was it was, the, it was the idea that like you sh you should be comfortable with like with just being okay with the process changing over time. Yeah, yeah. Improvisation, yeah. Oh, that's a good quote. I like that. Yeah. We recorded 16 or well, 15 songs in eight days, I think. Just the basic tracks, drums, bass, guitar, vocals. And then since then, we've put on so many different tracks, taken stuff away, put in all kinds of backing vocals, little lead guitar parts, synth, all these different ideas that have um, kind of come after as an afterthought of you know, finally hearing everything down and like listening back to the songs. So it's been really good to, uh, you know, all work together to uh, just keep, keep creating it and keep making the songs better mm -hmm. and making them into something that they probably <laughs> wouldn't, you know, never, uh, never sounded like in the first place or when, when we started writing them, you know, when we started getting involved. Mm -hmm. Never, never afraid of process and progress. Yeah. So, yeah. And you, so you will be releasing one single at a time. Is that correct? And where did that come from? Where does that idea come from? Oh, like releasing one at a time and, you know, when and when can we expect all the albums to be completed? Like a whole of them will be released. Um, we don't, we don't have a specific day picked out for the album release. Um, and we're not going to necessarily release every song as a single. Um, we're, we, we have we have at least four singles that we have, have planned out. Um, and then the album will come out uh, in late spring, early summer. Um, yeah, it still it still gives us some gives us some time to work on 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 a couple things in there as well. Um, it, it would take a long time if, if we were to release uh, every one of them as a single, and we, we want to kind of keep writing music and keep creating more music. So um, we're def we definitely want it to get out there, um, so that we can kind of <laughs> already already get creating on the on the next album. Um, but yeah, we can you can you can expect you can expect to hear at least at least four more singles or or four singles uh, over the next uh, over the next four months or so. Um, and then, and then the album would be following shortly after that. I, yeah, that sounds amazing. As a way to start 2024, you you're going to have this first album coming up. So that's a that's a whole story for within like you know from the start that you guys formed. So how have things have changed or evolved within the group since you started? There, there was there was another member of the band, uh, Johnny Savage, the Comfortably Savage. Uh, he was he was part of the crew as well. Uh, me and him 
uh, sang the songs uh, at the beginning, and and we we used to jam. We used to jam a lot on these songs and work on them together. So he he was definitely a big part of the sound. Um, he went off to uh, the Kootenays to continue exploring Canada and uh, himself. Um, hopefully, we can run into him again in the future. Um, yeah, and and then aside from that, we've we've also had kind of other members um, that we that we invite on. Yeah. I think for me, the uh, biggest change, thing that changes how well I know these guys, you know, like when I moved here, I didn't know anybody and I went to community jams to meet people. And so when I first started playing with them, it was more of a semi-professional kind of, you know, music relationship. And since being the band, we've all become great friends and, you know, hanging out and, you know, it, that's the best part of it. Like, and it always has been with a band for me is like the bonds you create. Um, cause it reflects in the music too, you know, like the better you, you jive with people, the, uh, the easier it is to, to be creative and to come up with these amazing songs. And, and I think it's just a testament to, you know, how, how nice these guys are. These songs really show it like, you know, it's easy to, to be a bass player for them. Right on, right on. My name is Adam. Right next to me here, we got Shani Savage. Gavin Ricci, Mikey Swallow, Joe Xavier. Together we are the Infinite Atom. We're gonna play a couple tracks here for you. This one's called Aquarius Calamus.
Icarus Calamus is a psychedelic plant, apparently. <laughs> You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Yeah, I feel like we also learned how um, like to compose together. I feel like uh, we learned about, you know, what each one, each one has a, you know, a special thing about it. Like, like it's a power, you know, like a special power. I feel like, a, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes like, Oh, you know, can you, you know, like give us like an idea, you know, like maybe we're just looking for rhythm change or like, uh, you know, different colors or whatever, like effects or uh, maybe chord progressions or maybe a different melody, you know. So like we just look at each one because we kind of know what each one are good at. So that's what I mean about the superpowers. So I feel like we know each other in this way. So, uh, for instance, I feel like recording was an interesting experience because I never heard Mikey singing much. And I think like he came up with like really good backing vocals and like that was time to put a microphone for him while he's playing drums and he was just hiding back there. <laughs> so, <My> yeah. <laughs> he was always singing his says, right? Go on, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, I've always, I always have, yeah. But you know, there was, there was so many songs to learn over the past year that it was, you know, we, we've all, we were all focusing on our own instruments. And then once we started recording, we kind of branched out a bit and kind of crossed over. And, you know, someone would come up with a drum beat or some would, someone else would come up with a bass solo or whatever, you know. Uh, every Everyone plays their little part in each other's um, role in the band, which is amazing. I love that. What has been surprising? There was something surprising about working together as a group. Uh, the community response, I think, uh, you know, everybody has been so supportive of the group and what we want to do and just coming at the shows. And, um, you know, we've been doing these jams on the beach uh, in the summer and it was just amazing to me. It was really surprising, I guess, uh, just to see how much people were uh, enthusiastic, truly enthusiastic about the music we were presenting. Um, Maybe they can feel the authenticity behind it. Maybe, you know, they're just really, really nice. I don't know. But uh, it was surprising just to see the, the outpouring of support. Great to, it's great to watch your work manifest. You know, it's like you, you it's, it's starting in like a living room as, as a jam and, and hearing these songs for the first time and writing them. And, and you know, it's like when you, when you start these things, you don't really like envision like people dancing to it. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't really see people enjoying the music. It's like when you're, when you're first starting, you're, you're trying to figure out how it goes, but it's like part of, part of the magic, I think of, of any art form is that when you like, when you create whatever it is that you're creating, when you, when you get to, when you get to have other people kind of channel, channel that work with you, it's like, that's, that's when it's, that's when it's special. That's kind of when the magic, comes out and that to me that's like that's that's what i'm working towards that's like the i don't know if it's necessarily the end goal or or the or the end result but i mean for me a, a big reason i do this is because i want other people to to be able to feel a message to be able to to dance to to the rhythm that you know might open them up to feel something else um and yeah when you when you first write these you don't you don't you don't know it's going to affect someone but then you know you might you might play it a couple of weeks later at the next show and it's people are already moving to it people are already enjoying it so it's really cool to, to watch watch that process mold really quickly and, and form into something are you kidding
what is your uh, expectation for the group in, in 2024 this year? Will you perform again or what's next? I think that we're all pretty keen to play. You know, we've got this new material all ready to go. And by summer, it's going to be, you know, released and all polished up for you. So we're, we want to go through the process of getting a bunch of shows now so that this summer we can hit it hard. And, um, you know, again, just like that live music, that spirit of live music is going to carry us to whatever is next. I don't expect anything to happen, you know, expectations, uh, I, you know, but I'm excited. We're going to become better, definitely, even with making music and uh, recording, playing it live, maybe even booking shows and uh, getting into the festivals, hopefully. It's just a matter of organization now because we have the material and uh, I, I, I would be nice to be around and play more live. Uh, we already did, but it's nice to just play more. And, yeah. how, many, how many shows have we played in, in the last year? Oh, it's hard to tell because with Brickyard, it was at least one a week. And then we were sometimes going away for the weekend to play three or four times. So, like, we would do bouts of little mini tours almost, you know, that I would consider them all shows. But they were sometimes they were very jammy. And, like, I don't know. We, we, we have seasons. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, like, we took advantage of fall, right, for recording, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Because we were busier uh, with Brickyard uh, organizing the open mics. And uh, yeah, because Adam is a big part of it. He's the main organizer of the Brickyard. So, if, you know, if Adam is out, we can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so now Adam is more available. And we are all more available because we help with the Brickyard organization too. And uh, uh, with setting up and all the stuff for the Brickyard or other events that we, we organize with Adam. But yeah, now we just took advantage of it. So I guess like maybe the seasons is interesting thinking because summer we are busier, I guess, performing perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we take advantage of it. It's again, it's, this is just our first year, right? As a band. So it's kind of hard, right? To tell what's going to unfold, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Uh, so like it was a solid idea. And I would definitely let, want to see you guys live <laughs> perform because i feel like it i once is never enough that's for sure <laughs> anyone that listens to you guys <laughs> it's always different for sure you know yeah. the, uh, the the parts are what they are you know we all know the songs but there's a spirit of improvisation that goes through all the music uh you know i mean i'm i enjoy playing every single time because of that you know it's uh yeah it's always live for me. <laughs> It's also something nice to say the shows also become better because uh, our events, our uh, show setup becomes also better, I feel. Uh, Adam has a lot of equipment as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of lighting, uh, lots of lights. We just, Adam uh, also got the, what was the name of the thing that we got that shines an uh, image again? Uh, just like a projector? Uh, yes, projector. Well, yeah, there's a lot that goes into the show. Yeah, yeah so. We got like Adam made this like uh, animation video, where like with a lot of pictures and like psychedelic effects, and it, it just shines in the wall. It so and this time they made it in the ceilings, so pretty cool. So the shows become a really interesting experience, also, and they become better. Like we just become more creative about it, and you know just understand this kind of stuff better. And networking too. We meet people who have new skills, and they you know are enthusiastic sometimes and the shows become what you know what people bring um yeah i don't know if we play two shows that were exactly the same i don't think we ever will <laughs> yeah anything you'd like to share with everyone before about the band or where to keep up with your future projects i mean mikey i, I know you're uh and i know you might not you, you you have a bit of a sore throat maybe um but maybe if you could ask mikey about um about the recording process, just because he he uh, he did most of the work for for the actual production for the album itself. Yeah, sure. Why don't you tell us about that? Um. Yeah. So yeah, we we started off doing the uh, the main traps for the, with the with the whole band all in the all in the room playing at the same time. 
So we did 16 songs over eight days or so. It went really fast. A great, great experience. Um, and then, and, and we've gradually just been adding to the songs and um, just refining them. And at this point, it's mostly down to mixing and a bit, bit of editing here and there. Uh, but I'm, I'm away for three months and I'll just be editing and mixing the songs and uh, sending them over to the guys as, uh, as I get stuff done. And then they can tell me what to change and uh yeah we'll 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 see how that goes should be interesting we call then, it the mikey magic <laughs> then when i get back we you know we can we can always we can always add add to the songs a little bit more if we need to there's no there's no rush but it's kind of nice releasing one song at a time for now because we can really just focus on that one song work on a video idea and and look f and look forward to getting the whole the whole thing out when we can all be in the same room together and and uh, and do a, a an album release show or or a tour or something. Uh, yeah, if you want to hear uh, more of our music, um, you can search up the Infinite Atom A T O M on Spotify, on Tidal Music, Apple Music, um, iTunes if that's still a thing. Napster. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on all the streaming services. It's on YouTube. Um, you can search up the band name on YouTube. Uh, you can also check out our website, theinfiniteatom.com. Uh, we have some live videos up on there. There's uh, some photos uh, for press and just for, for looking at for your enjoyment. If you want to reach out uh, for any shows, if you got any festivals that you want to see us at, feel free to get in contact with us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're looking forward to see where your music journey goes and definitely keeping up with all the singles that's coming up real soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.
Do it, I 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 do it,